Hello, my beautiful soul, and welcome back to the channel. Today's episode, we are going to be diving into chapter one, insight number one of the Celestine Prophecy. I just started reading this book a couple weeks ago, and ironically enough, the first insight is super aligned with how I found this book because I had downloaded this book on my audiobook app years ago and I had wanted to read it but for some reason I just never did and then a month or so back I was visiting my dad I was out at his cottage and he always has the coolest bookshelf because it's all like aliens and galactic stuff and um I don't know, a lot of spirituality and different teachings and remote viewing and all these things. And this book was sitting there and I was like, what on earth? How have I not seen this book out here? So I don't know if he borrowed it from someone, but it was the exact kind of synchronicity and coincidence that I'm going to dive into on this episode. So I felt like because as I was reading this, it's so powerful and so much of it resonates a lot with my own journey. And I feel like there are incredible teachings in this book that the whole world can benefit from. And I want to support in bringing that forward and just sharing even extra tangible things as I'm going through it. So if you wanna be a part of the book club, join along, subscribe, uh, make sure you have notifications on. We'll be going through the insights here. I'm also going to share a bit more inside my Telegram group. I started a free group recently. So if you want to be a part of a like-minded community, the link for that is in the description below to join us. And let's dive in. So there are nine insights in this book and I'm not going to ruin the storyline. I'm not going to get too into the details because this book is incredible. If you love The Alchemist, which is one of my favorites, this is like, I would say next level, but probably also just because of the energetic piece that I love it that much more. But it reminds me of The Alchemist and it's just got such an incredible storyline in how it's bringing these teachings forward. And these teachings are so powerful. So, yes, let's get into the very first insight. The first insight has to do with the awakening that's currently happening on the planet. And it has to do with the fact that people are starting to feel a stirring in their soul and a calling that they're meant for more. And <laughs> it makes me super emotional. I wasn't expecting that. But it makes me think of like how I felt years ago and how I know so many people, so many of my friends, so many of my circle can relate to this. I'm assuming if this video has found you, you're going to relate as well because that's the magic of how this all works. Is that so many of us have woken up to the fact that things are not as they seem on this planet and that there's actually so much more than what we've been led to believe. There's so much more in terms of our purpose. There's so much more in terms of having meaning. And so one of the things that came through for me as I was reading this is kind of making meaning from the mundane. There becomes a restlessness in your spirit when you're going through the motions and there's no meaning. And I know when I think back to where I was years ago before my spiritual awakening with losing my brother and all the trauma that came after that, um, I was very stuck, very stuck in this place of believing there had to be more, but not knowing what it was and seeing so many people around me just accepting what they've been told to be the truth and the uh, inquiring, inquisitive, the inquisitive mind in me was just like, I'm so curious. I'm like, I want to know the answers. I want to understand things. I want to constantly be learning new things. And I just looked and thought, how how are so many people just accepting that this is okay and no one's questioning what's going on or why things are working in such ass backwards ways? <laughs> like, why why are we all just tolerating it, I guess? And so the first insight talks about how 
more and more people are starting to feel a restlessness. They're starting to feel a calling to something more. This might show up as anger. This might show up as frustration. It might show up as anxiety. For me, it was a lot of anxiety around the current way I was living and like feeling so trapped in that and having this turning point, this decision of like, am I going to accept that this is what life is or am I going to choose something different? And it's in that choosing that we start to open up to what the world really is, what the universe really is, what existence really is, where we start to open our minds out of the limited 3D box that we've been put in for our whole life. And what's beautiful is that this has been happening on the planet, but I do see and feel a major uprising. Um, I'm no expert in astrology. I'm actually probably the worst. the worst person to talk to about it but uh the whole like shift into the Aquarian age and like how Aquarius is very much like out there and free thinker and doing things radically differently and shaking up the old structured systems and I think that there's no coincidence to the fact that that's why so many of us who have incarnated at this particular time are a part of breaking that box and breaking out of the limitations to really start looking at things differently, to be open to more. Even if, as myself, even if it doesn't come with full clear answers, but there's just that curiosity of like, there's got to be something and I'm going to open my mind and start asking questions or start looking in different places that I maybe wasn't looking before. The next part of the first insight, which is one of my personal favorites, has to do with synchronicity. And for those who have maybe followed my journey for a while, you may know that that's a a big key word for me. I actually have it tattooed on my foot beside my little elephant. And this was a word that came into my life after Derek passed away. My mom started reading so many books about grief and I was like not interested, but I was having my own spiritual experience. I was having so many signs from him and dreams and songs and messages and owls like showing up no matter where I was living, all of a sudden just being outside the house. Um, I was walking home from university volleyball by myself late at night and the lights would flicker and I would be watching them and they wouldn't be flickering anywhere else. They wouldn't be flickering before me. They wouldn't be flickering after me. But right as I got under them, they'd flicker. And I was like, okay. And it happened consistently. And then I'd get past the string of lights and I'd look back and they'd all be normal, not a single flicker at all. And someone else would walk by and nothing would happen. And so it was these, what would be seemingly coincidences to a lot of people Um, I started to have those with my connection to Derek and his his soul. But my mom, in one of her books on grief, came across the word synchronicity. And for her, a very logical, dense... (laughs) No offense, mom, if you're watching this. (laughs) Her dense 3D mind. It was a way to make sense of the nonsensical it was a way to make sense of the magic right and like what is this sign why does this red hot chili pepper song come on at the perfect time like every time i just go to open the car and turn it on a red hot chili pepper song is playing and that's never happened before and they were my brother's favorite band or you know walk into a room and this song plays or owl on the front cover of the newspaper on the first year anniversary of his death and they were his favorite animal and he sent them all the time like all these things that the logical mind could not comprehend and a closed off person would have just completely dismissed closed the book not looked at it right that was the beginning of my own awakening into seeing beyond just the physical and realizing that there was so much more taking place. And synchronicity itself at that time became a beautiful word. And then I met a friend of mine, a dear friend, Katie, and 
she was such a monumental piece in my journey in aligning me with parts of my purpose that maybe would have taken years if I hadn't met her. And it was like the most random coincidence of being at a volleyball tryout at the same time and then kind of being at physio and then suddenly a few months later we never talked again we were working at the same golf course and eventually the friendship kind of continued and she mentioned wanting to go to Sri Lanka and I had never had any intention of traveling there I had very little knowledge about it at all but I knew they had elephants and I had had a childhood dream of working with elephants and it felt like one of those moments where you can take that higher perspective and look at it and it's like the universe or God, some sort of higher power is aligning the pieces of the puzzle for you in perfect order and in divine timing. And that's the synchronicity that starts to happen when we open up to the fact that there is more. So the beautiful thing about the first insight is that when people start to feel the restlessness, and maybe you're already at that, maybe you've passed that stage, maybe this is kind of a few years before and you've, you've gone past it, um, but you'll definitely relate regardless. When you have that restlessness and you start asking questions or being open to more, it's your openness that allows you to start to see the synchronicities and see that there's actually a higher plan at play that maybe this isn't just a random coincidence and it's actually a meaningful coincidence, right? It's so divinely orchestrated and perfect and happening for a reason that is way beyond what your little tiny logical mind can comprehend, but your soul knows it and your soul feels it. And so you trust it and you follow that path. And what I love about this book in general is that it's it's a journey of following the synchronicities. Like truly every single insight that he is coming across, it's not from him forcing. It's not from him hustling. It's not from him like overthinking or trying to find it. It's from him just trusting the flow and going where things are aligning, going where things feel good. And so with my first huge synchronicity in my life, it was, it was like meeting Katie, the fact that we had all these things in common, she had an understanding of grief that I didn't have from a lot of my close friends. So we immediately had this like bond and understanding about that. And she was like the one, <laughs> I'll start crying, she was like, the one person who understood that I was like really hurting myself by continuing to play volleyball and that I was doing it just because I thought I had to and because uh, people expected it of me and I felt a lot of pressure. Like she could tell that it was fully people pleasing and not what I wanted at all because everything in me was screaming that I wanted to be traveling, that I wanted purpose and I wanted to do something meaningful and not waste my time and like live a life that not only made me happy and excited and helped others, but also that would have been honoring Derek and like making the most of the fact that I realized life can change so quickly and he wasn't here to live out all these years and I wanted to be able to like bring his spirit his essence with me and do things that he didn't get the chance to do and so she helped not encourage not push by any means but she just helped be that support system i needed at a really crucial time in my life to remind me that i deserve to do the things that i wanted and that i deserve to feel happy and that i didn't have to stay stuck in the pain and it was truly like the most perfect alignment because once I said yes to that and I trusted the flow, even though there was a lot of unknowns and maybe scary feelings on the other side, I 
had the difficult conversation with my coach and with my teammates, with my parents, letting them know I was dropping out of university or like not returning the next year. I did all the cleanup I needed to do, went home, worked three jobs for the summer, saved a whole bunch of money. I was miserable doing it and it was horrible, but it was for the purpose of I'm going to save so much that I can go spend a year traveling the world and checking off my bucket list and doing all the things I want. And I'm going to work with elephants and fulfill that childhood dream. So when Katie and I went to Sri Lanka, I had planned to volunteer at this sanctuary for two weeks after she finished, like after her trip ended and she went back home. Um, but we got these tattoos together that said synchronicity and I got an elephant beside mine. And at that point, I didn't even have a job working there, but I knew in every core of my being that I was going to get a job and that I was gonna end up back in that country working with elephants. And that's exactly what happened. But it was some of the most, yeah, pivotal moments of seeing the synchronicity, seeing the energies line up and me trusting and following that flow instead of fighting it or overthinking it or staying trapped where I didn't want to be. So with the insight number one, bringing it back around to that, I would love to leave this with a reflection for you of when in your life have things just kind of aligned and maybe sparked that conscious awareness of like, this seems a little bit mystical and this seems a little bit magical. It seems like a coincidence. I've had a lot of people in my life where I met them by being in the exact right place at the exact right time and had any tiny factor been different, we would not have crossed paths. And it's scary. It's like depressing to think about if that hadn't happened because they played such a huge role in my life. And we're such big catalysts for like growth and change and opportunities and healing and all the things. And those are the perfect moments of synchronicity where it's like your mind cannot disagree. Your mind cannot say like, that was just a coincidence. It's so perfect. And it was such a pivotal key experience to help get you somewhere and help align you more with your path that you have to start to trust in something bigger than just the physical and that's what this first insight is about is like when we start realizing and awakening to the fact that there is more than meets the eye that simple shift in awareness opens us up to start to see the little bits of magic right and even for myself, sometimes that magic comes through pain. Sometimes it's not what my ego thought it would be. It's not what I expected. But a month, six months, a year down the line, I can look back and go like, whoa, that experience actually caused the shift or forced a certain level of healing or forced me to break a pattern that I was stuck in and feel more empowered. And if that wouldn't have happened, I wouldn't have stepped into this new level and been where I am today. So like really being able to look at your life and reflect on a person or a situation where it felt like divine coincidence. It felt like synchronicity. It felt like that alignment was at play working to support you in getting where you want to be. And once you've reflected on that and maybe just feeling into the ways that that's helped shift your timelines, shift your trajectory of your life, um, feeling gratitude for it, obviously, but then being open to the ways that that can continue to happen. Because as we shift out of ego, consciousness and being so stuck in what we think we know and we open up to being a channel for the divine we will be guided we will continue to be led you will continue to see signs uh synchronicities 
little things that you go, whoa, that's that's a little bit odd. <laughs> the timing of that is really odd. Maybe it's a license plate, it's a number. It's all these different ways that spirit can communicate to us. It's an animal crossing your path right when you were thinking a specific thought, you know? It's a sign in a dream, it's a song on the radio. There's all these ways that the divine is communicating when we're open to hearing it. And fortunately, the way things are working on the planet, what we're continuing to move into is allowing us to open up to more and more of that, to experiencing more of the energetic realm and the magic, the alignment, the flow that life gets to be. We've spent long enough in ho uh, <laughs> in hustle and force. I was gonna say in horse. Uh, we've spent long enough in hustle and force and that can only get you so far. What about flow? What about the alignment? What about trusting your intuition, trusting that you're actually supported in what you desire? And instead of res like fighting and forcing through the resistance, you just go, hmm, let me chill here for a second and feel into what's best. Let me ask for guidance. Let me listen to my intuition. Let me be a clear channel for the divine to move through. And then in that openness, I get the sign, I get the message, I get the download, I get the next step. I see the higher picture, the timeline. I see the future version of me and I can reverse engineer. Whatever it comes through for you, you suddenly get to show up and operate in a totally new way. And it's like the little, it's like the little breadcrumbs, right? Planted on your path and you bump into someone unexpected and they plant the seed. They drop the little message that's exactly what you needed to hear at that time. And it continues to catalyze and support everything you're stepping into. So continue remaining open is how I'm gonna end this. Continue remaining open to the synchronicity, to that higher alignment, to the fact that you are so deeply supported in all of this, even if you can't always see it and you can't always feel it, but when you take the time to connect and tune in, you'll realize you feel it more and more and your life gets to become one like magical breadcrumb <laughs> trail chasing like tasty beautiful experience towards everything that is uh destined for you right so that is insight number one i'm gonna leave this here as i said please feel free to join the telegram group if you want to connect uh it would be really cool to like actually create more book club vibes with this if people want to share and be in that space i'm all for it um or feel free to comment down below and uh i will see you very soon with insight number two and we will continue this book <laughs>